This is Mr. Martin. Uh, these are the video notes for Geometry Honor, section 11.8. We're going to be looking at two uh, formulas for finding areas. One is for a triangle. It's called Hero's Formula. And uh, the other is for a cyclic quadrilateral. We'll talk more about that in a minute, uh, called Brahmagupta's Formula. So starting with Hero's Formula, um, this can be used to find the area of any triangle the area of any triangle if we know the lengths of the three sides. Okay, so note length of three sides must be known. All right, so um, the area of the triangle, if we know the three sides, is going to be the square root of S, where S is the semi-perimeter. Okay, at, for some reason, um, students tend to forget what the semi-perimeter. Semi is half, so half the perimeter. So you add up the three sides, and then you divide it by 2, and you get the semi-perimeter. So it's going to be S times uh, the quantity s minus a times the quantity s minus b times the quantity s minus c. So don't forget that there's a semi-perimeter at the beginning here and then you basically subtract the length of each side from the semi-perimeter, multiply it all together, and take the square root. So that's Hero's formula and next we have Brahmagupta's formula. This formula is used to find the area of a cyclic quadrilateral. It can only be used if it's cyclic. Remember cyclic means that it can be inscribed in a circle. All of the vertices have to be on the circle. If it's not actually drawn in a circle, uh, hopefully you remember that's going to be on the circle there. It's a little bit off. Um, a property of a cyclic quadrilateral, which you can use to check to see if your, the given quadrilateral is cyclic, is that the opposite angles are going to be supplementary. So those two angles would be supplementary and these two angles would be supplementary. Then you know it's cyclic. So if you're given that it's cyclic or once you determine that it's cyclic, here's our formula. We've got the area of a cyclic quadrilateral. It's going to be the square root of s minus a times s minus b times s minus c times s minus d. So notice in this formula there is not that semi-perimeter by itself like we have up here in the formula for the area of a triangle. So again semi-perimeter you're going to add up the four sides and divide by two so you get half the perimeter and then you basically subtract each of the lengths of the quadrilateral from the semi-perimeter, multiply those all together, and take the square root. Um, so if you have any questions about that, make sure you ask. Let's move on to a couple of examples. Uh, you may want to take out a separate sheet of paper, because um, I'm not sure if you're going to have enough room in here. Um, but we're given these four points, and we want to find the ratio of certain triangles. So I'm just going to make a, a very quick sketch of these points. Um, so I've got negative 3, negative 7 is over here. So this is point A. And then I've got 2, negative 3, which is over somewhere around here. So that's point B. And then I have 12, 5, 12, 5, which is going to be somewhere about here. We're just estimating. And then I have 5, 7, which is going to be somewhere around here. Here's point D. So it kind of looks from my quick sketch that these three points are collinear and if they are that's going to make the problem a little bit easier to solve. So I'm looking at this skinny triangle here A, B, D, this triangle here and then this other triangle here, triangle C, B, D and if we can actually figure out if these three points are collinear, if we turn it sideways, we can use this as the height of both triangles because ABD is an obtuse triangle. Remember, if I'm standing up here, you want to turn your paper sideways and I drop down my rope, it would drop down to the ground, which would be side AB over there. So one way to figure out if these... Um, 
points are collinear is just to look at the slopes between uh, the points. So let's take a look first at the slope of AB. So the slope of AB is going to be negative 3 plus 7 divided by 2 minus negative 3, so that's 2 plus 3, so that gives me 4 fifths. And now let's take a look at the slope of BC. That's going to be 5 minus negative 3, or 5 plus 3, divided by 12 minus 2. So that gives me 8 tenths, which reduces to 4 fifths. So we can see that they have the same slope. Therefore, they're going to be collinear. So we can use um, this height from D as the height of both triangles, uh, which is going to make our life a little bit easier. So the ratio of the areas, we've got triangle ABD, the area of triangle ABD to the area of triangle CBD. So the area of this triangle is going to be one half its base, which is going to be AB. We'll figure that out later. And its height, which we don't really know, we're just going to call it H. And then the other triangle, CBD, it's going to be one half times its base, which is BC times H. So we can see that the halves are going to cancel and the H's are going to cancel. So what we need to do is we need to find the lengths of AB and BC so we can use the distance formula. So this is going to be the square root. So for AB, we're going to have 2 minus negative 3 or 2 plus 3 squared plus negative 7 plus 3 squared and then for BC we're going to have 12 minus 2 squared plus 5 plus 3 squared so in the numerator uh, this simplifies to the square root of 41 in the denominator, this simplifies to the square root of 164. So let's simplify a little more. Square root of 41 doesn't simplify. Uh, 164 is 4 times 41, so that's going to be 2 root 41. And then if we simplify this further, these are going to cancel out. So we're left with a ratio of 1 to 2. All right, so kind of an involved um, problem here and there's some concepts that you, you need to understand and be thinking about in order to solve the problem otherwise there's really no way to do it unless um, you want to use Hero's formula and the distance formula a whole bunch of times to figure it out which you can do um, you know it's just I, I wouldn't really recommend it all right so uh, Last example, uh, find the area given that EFG and GH, JHG are right angles. So I've got a right angle here, and I've got a right angle here. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to divide this into three triangles. And so I've got one, two, and three. Okay, so if I find the area of each triangle separately, all I have to do is add them up. The right triangles are going to be the e easiest, so the area of triangle 1, that's going to be 1 half its base times height, and we like right triangles because we can use the legs as the base and the height, so that's going to be 6 times 8, which is going to give us 24. And then let's find the area of triangle 3 first, because that's going to be a little bit easier. That's going to be 1 half of 3 times 4, so that's going to be 6. Now, since these are right triangles, I can find the lengths of the other sides. I know that uh, EG is going to be 10. That's a 3, 4, 5, triple times 2. And I know that uh, GJ is going to be 5. That's just a 3, 4, 5 triple. So I know that this side is going to be 10, and this side is going to be 5. And now that I know all three sides, I can use Hero's formula. So the area of 
triangle 2 is going to be the square root of, let's find the semi-perimeter, so s is going to be 10 plus 9 plus 5 divided by 2, that's uh, 19 plus 4 is 24, divided by 2 is 12. So it's going to be 12 times 12 minus 10 times 12 minus 9 times 12 minus 5. So that gives me, um, if we plug that into the calculator, you're going to get about 24.45. So therefore, the area is going to be 24 plus 6 plus 24.45, which is going to be 54.45. Okay, so even though you have this formula for finding the area of any triangle, you want to use it kind of as a last resort, because if there's other easier ways to do it, you're going to want to do it that way. For example, the two right triangles here, we just used one half base times height. So again, as always, make sure you're working through the homework problems, asking questions when you have them. Uh, again, be honest with yourself about whether you understand how to do the problems. You should be able to do them by yourself without any help or without referring back to solutions. Um, and if you can't do that, uh, you need to, to you know, keep working so that you can do that when we have quizzes and tests. See you next time.